Are you thinking of selling your house or condo unit and want to avoid major mistakes that could cost you thousands of dollars? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the top common mistakes, but Miami edition, because you guys know we are extra and we are a different species and I've seen it all in houses and apartments that I say, oh my God. Anyway, I am Stefania McGollin, your South Florida and Miami real estate agent. And if you're thinking of buying, selling or investing in Miami or anywhere in South Florida, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. All my information is gonna be down on the description box. You can send me a text, give me a call, send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to help you make the move. Now, without further ado, let's dive into most common home selling mistakes, Miami edition. Number one, curb appeal. Now, this is a typical, oh, they make that mistake, but here in Miami, we are in a tropical weather. All year round, you can do outdoor activities. So it is usual for people to start leaving things outside in the front yard or the backyard, like toys, sports items, barbecue. So it is easy to start lacking on that area. And also because we have a tropical weather, we have the benefit to maintain a beautiful landscape all year round, but some people lack at doing it. Also, some people may make the mistake of painting the house in super bright Miami colors, orange, red, pink. I know you love the color, but you need to appeal the property to the majority of the public. So let's not do that. So let's ensure, number one, no clutter outside or in the backyard. Landscaping is in good shape. Take care of the pools, the palm trees, and everything in general on the outdoor. Because remember, the first impression counts a lot. Number two, overpricing your house. Yes, a lot of people do this all around the United States. However, here in Miami, we experienced home value increases of over 50% in the past couple of years. And what happens is that some sellers still feel that that trend is gonna go on, 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 and on, and on forever. Unfortunately, is not. So just make sure your house or condo unit, it's priced well. I'm not saying underprice it, but look for comparables of properties similar to yours. And remember what things count when pricing according to your property. For example, for a condo unit, the floor where your unit is at, the view, the building, the square footage. So it's certain variables that you need to account. Same for houses. Probably your house is right next to another one that sold for more, but it happens to be in a different zip code, meaning in a different school district. So those are things that make into account when it comes to pricing your home. So pay attention. I know you want to get the most amount of money for your house, but why will someone pay more for your house when they have similar options out in the market? So buyers shop around, buyers notice how long has your house been in the market? Are you reasonable or not reasonable? And what happens is that they tend to skip houses that are overpriced just because you're already letting the world know that this is what you want. And you may come off as a person that's not willing to negotiate so buyers may skip to see your house all together. So yes, right now we're seeing price reductions everywhere, especially in the condo market. So be very aware of where you price your home and remember interest rates affect the purchase power of your future buyers. So consider everything if you really wanna sell. Number three, and this is one that's often overlooked, which is local regulations and local disclosures. Miami, we are a tropical weather. We have a dry season and a rain season, storm season, hurricane season, and we tend to have a lot of flooding in many parts of Miami. So it is good for you to make sure all the disclosures when it comes to flood zone are provided to the future buyer. And also, if you have done any repair or construction in your house that doesn't have the proper permits, please make sure you get it. The reason why is that some people put the property for sale, they just don't pay attention to this or they're not even aware of it. They get into a contract and then they realize all of this and everybody's wasting time 
you are not selling your property because bank is not gonna lend. So that can lead to a lot of problems. Mistake number four, and it's a little bit related to the previous one, but uh, in a different way, which is being unprepared for inspections and appraisals. What do I mean by that? Again, we are in a tropical weather and it is a very, very humid weather. Be prepared for mold inspections and termite inspections. So if your property has had any of these things or you suspect of having it, it's always good to do a pre-inspection to make sure everything is up to date and nothing surprising shows up at the time of the actual inspection from the buyer. Number five, not being flexible with showing. What I mean by that is in Miami, we have all sorts of buyers. We have the family buyers, we have the out of town buyers, we have the ones that work on weekends and at night or vice versa. So you need to be really, really flexible when it comes to showings because maybe your buyer is in town only for two days. So one, hire a realtor that's very responsive and two, make sure you're flexible with how often and how easy a buyer can come and see your property. You do not know where the buyer is gonna come from and what's their schedule limitation. So the more open you are, the more showings, the more offers, the more negotiations, the more money. Number six and last one, and I'm gonna do the most Miami edition, which is for staging. What I mean by Miami edition is that, you guys know, we are extra and there is people that put in their personality very very much into their properties and some people may love it but some people may not what i mean by that is that some homeowners may want to live in a space that's very eclectic very trendy very fashion very artistic red and purple and black walls everywhere with accents and you know, they go all out and faucets that are gold with crystals. God knows, I've seen it all. I know you love it and probably I do too. But the idea is for you to help the buyers visualize themselves in your property. So for Miami, a modern, neutral, minimalistic look, coastal look goes a long way. So if you have to repaint some walls, I will totally suggest it. Another thing is try to remove personal objects when you are ready to lease the property, like photos, trophies, and things like that, because that distracts the buyer attention from the house to who you are and what do you do and where do you come from. And you don't want that to affect the decision of the buyer and you want the buyer to actually envision themselves in your space. So the more neutral you make your property, the better. There are so many more huge mistakes that can also cost you thousands of dollars, but for now, I'm gonna leave it here. Remember, I am Stefania Mogol and you're Miami and South Florida real estate agent. So if you're seriously thinking, or not seriously, honestly, if you're thinking of selling, buying, or investing anywhere in South Florida, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I can actually even provide you like a free market evaluation on a monthly or quarterly basis, depending on how soon you wanna sell. Just feel free to reach out to me. My information is gonna be down on the description box. Send me a text, give me a call, send me an email, and I'll be more than happy to help you make the move.